Good morning to the viewers in the United States. Good evening to those in Japan. Welcome to Sasakawa Peace Foundation USA's policy briefing series. I am Satohiro Akimoto, chairman and president of Sasakawa Peace Foundation USA. I am delighted to have you all. Sasakawa Peace Foundation USA is a nonpartisan 501c3 organization dedicated to deepening the understanding of and strengthening the relationship between Japan and the United States in the Asia Pacific context for the good of a free and open international community. Today's featured speaker is Dr. Jerry Curtis, Burgess Professor Emeritus of Political Science at the Columbia University. Dr. Atsushi Tsunami, President of the Sasakawa Peace Foundation in Tokyo, a student of Dr. Curtis at Columbia, will introduce him. Today's gathering is a little unusual as we have a larger number of Japanese participants. I would like to extend my heartfelt welcome to those from Japan, particularly people connecting with us for the first time. Many of them are Professor Curtis' former students. It's a testimony to Professor Curtis' long-time commitment to Japan and the US-Japan relationship, and of course, to his student. With all due respect to expert that we have today, and we have many, Dr. Curtis is one of the most, if not the most, keen and insightful American observer of Japanese politics over a long, time, long period of time. It is my honor to have Professor Curtis at this pivotal time in Japanese politics, US politics, and hence US-Japan relationship. We usually have our event using Zoom webinar, but we are using Zoom meeting today so that all of us who share warm appreciation and respect to Professor Curtis can see each other, just like a reunion surrounding Professor Curtis. We are all connected. I encourage you to uh, turn on the video camera so that we can see you all. Lastly, while the gathering is scheduled for an hour, Professor Curtis said he would be happy to extend it if participants desire to do so. As some of you know, Professor Curtis is an accomplished jazz musician, so we're going to go jazzy about the length of today's <laughs> session. Dr. Tsunami, please introduce Professor Curtis. Thank you, uh, Dr. Akimoto. I'm Atsushi Tsunami, the president of Sasakawa Peace Foundation. I was just assumed this position uh, last June, and uh, it's been about three months. Uh, and um, it is my great honor and uh, privilege to introduce today's speaker. As Dr. Uh, Akimoto mentioned, he is my professor and a mentor in political science when I uh, did my graduate work at Columbia, but he remained as my teacher uh, throughout my uh, rest of my life. And uh, for today's audience in particular, uh, Professor Curtis really needs no introduction. However, I want to take this opportunity to thank Professor Curtis for his long time contribution to the advancement of uh, not only the understanding of the Japanese politics, but, all, but also the field of political science and international relations, including the US-Japan relations. Uh, but more personally though, I want to thank you, uh, Professor Curtis, for your kind support as a teacher and a mentor for all the students that worked, studied under his leadership and his, uh, his professor, as a professor. And uh, I just spoke with uh, Minister Shinjiro Koizumi who is another student from Japan. Uh, uh, and uh, we still value his teachings in political science uh, in, in really thinking about the Japanese politics. So we are looking very much forward to his observations uh, in looking at the today uh, under the current uh, Suga administration and Jap the future of the Japanese politics. When I joined the uh, political science de uh, student uh, uh, department at Columbia, uh, of course, the Bible of the Japanese politics was electioning campaign, election campaigning Japanese style 
which has already been uh, well read in Japan and as well as uh, other comparative politics uh, students uh, that are interested in Japanese politics, which uh, Professor Curtis has written and uh, really understand, uh, gives us a real in-depth understanding of how the election system works in Japan. And today even, uh, some of these elements still with us. And, uh, and by the time I started my graduate work, uh, he has just finished a book called The Japanese Way of Politics, which he, uh, he won the Ohira Masayoshi uh, Memorial Prize. Uh, and uh, I remember very clearly uh, at the beginning of this, uh, his lecture that he predicted that the, uh, by, based on the uh, found sound uh, political electric system and models that the future of, uh, by the, back then, uh, Japan's Socialist Party was very, very grim. And uh, he would say oh, he will disappear in, in, in few years. And look at today, that's what really happened. So, uh, and I still remember his real uh, uh, in-depth uh, uh, studies uh, on the uh, political party systems in general, and give, which gave us a very good way of founding uh, uh, foundation for analyzing comparative politics, not only in Japan, but other parts of the world, uh, and particularly focusing on this party systems. And so um, I, I can go on and on, <laughs> but I don't want to take too much time, of course. And, uh, and so I should stop here. But uh, I, again, uh, thank you, Professor Curtis, for your uh, long time support and, and guidance for many, many Japanese students and, 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 and me personally as well. So uh, with that, I want to give my back to Dr. Akimoto. Thank you. Dr. Tsunami, thank you very much. And uh, uh, Professor Curtis, the uh, floor is yours. Well, good morning, uh, everyone uh, here in, in the States. Good evening to those of you who are joining us uh, from Tokyo. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pleased, I'm honored uh, to be uh, here this morning to uh, talk about the Suga administration. And I'm really very uh, touched, I'm uh, grateful, but uh, even more than grateful, I'm, I, I'm really touched uh, by uh, the comments of uh, Mr. Tsunami about, um, about my role as a, as a teacher and mentor or whatever. Uh, it's just a, a very gratifying feeling to see, to know that students of mine have gone on to hold really very important positions in Japanese society and, 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 and here in the United States and other, other countries as well. So, so um, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Atsushi, for your, for your really very, very warm uh, comments. I, take, I appreciate them very much. Now, what I'd like to do is maybe take half, half hour or so, give you my current um, sort of uh, view of, of uh, Prime Minister Suga and his, and, and, and his administration and what to expect and what to hope for. So as you know, in September, uh, with Prime Minister Abe's uh, sudden decision to resign because of health issues, uh, the Chief Cabinet Secretary, Suga Yoshihide, was elected by the LDP to serve out the remaining one year of Abe's most recent term as LDP, Liberal Democratic Party, uh, party president. I'm pretty certain that a year or so ago, Mr. Suga had little expectation that he might be the next prime minister, but he became the man of the hour, acceptable to all the party's factional groupings because he belonged to none of them. Uh, that actually is a very interesting comment on what has happened to Japan's uh, fabled LDP factional politics. It's something I'll be happy to discuss should anyone wish to ask a question about it. During the seven and a half years that, that uh, Suga was Abe's chief cabinet secretary, he garnered a well-earned reputation for being decisive, for being tough, and for being someone who could be expected to continue Abe's basic domestic and foreign policy positions, which is what he is doing. 
11 months from now, however, Mr. Suga is going to have to face another LDP presidential election. Unlike the recent one where voting was limited to the party's diet members, there are about 300, there are 394 of them, and uh, 143 representatives from prefectural branches of the party, next year's election is going to include a first round of voting among the more than a million rank and file party members. So between now and then, Prime Minister Suga has to win the trust of the public and the support of his party's diet members if he wishes to win a regular three-year term and continue as prime minister, as he no doubt wishes to do. He has to convince the public that he has a credible strategy for dealing with the COVID epidemic uh, and, and the fallout from it, and for supporting Japan's economic recovery. Japan has done far better than most countries in controlling the spread of the coronavirus infections and in its extraordinary low, the extraordinary low death rate uh, from COVID. Less than 10 people per 1 million in Japan have died compared to 680 per million in the US. Less than 1800 deaths in, in all in Japan compared to more than 225,000 in the United States, a number that continues to rise. Nonetheless, there was Chris, widespread criticism of Prime Minister Abe's handling of the crisis and the feeling that he had gone missing in action, leaving it to subordinates to deal with the crisis as best they could. Uh, Suga gave a policy speech in the Diet um, in this, today, well, uh, this morning, in, in our time, like yesterday in, in, uh, in Japan, uh, in which he promised that Japan would have enough COVID-19 vaccines by the first half of the year to inoculate the entire population of Japan, all free of charge. He has emphasized the need uh, not only to give a priority to controlling the pandemic, but he stressed the importance of learning lessons from the COVID crisis, most especially the lesson that Japan is too backward in the development of its digital economy, that it has to take COVID as an opportunity uh, <clears throat> to move the economy and the government more fully into the digital age, something I'm going to come back to and talk about in a few minutes. At some point, before the LDP presidential election next September, Suga is going to have to call a general election, election for the members of the low house. Many thought that he would do so quickly, be perhaps before the end of this calendar year. I was one of them. Uh, that way he could take advantage of the high popularity he enjoyed immediately after he was elected prime minister. 74% public support in the first post-election Nikkei poll. And the only thing that could be said with certainty about his public support is that it has already peaked and can only go in one direction, which is down. Uh, an early election also would have put an end to speculation about when he might call one. And after the election, he'd be able to reshuffle his cabinet, which is almost entirely a carryover from Abe intended to demonstrate his commitment to continuity with Abe's policies. But it's clear that Mr. Suga has chosen another course, apparently deciding he'll wait the call an election until he's made some positive and popular achievements. And also waiting does put pressure on LDP diet members to stay in line with Suga's policies since Suga and the Secretary General of the LDP, Mr. Nikai, control the flow of camp, control the flow of campaign funds for the party's candidates and have the final word on who gets the party's endorsement for the election. Speculation is rife about when there'll be an election early in the regular diet session that convenes in January, either immediately before or after the Tokyo Olympics, if there is a Tokyo Olympics next July, or in September on the eve of the party's presidential election. We won't know until we know. The most important and pressing question is not when Suga is going to call an election, but what he's going to do to implement important and popular 
policy change. He has put regulatory reform and the commitment to a digital transformation at the top of his agenda. He is moving forward and moving forward quickly with plans to establish a digital technology agency to unify and support a whole of government digitalization policy. And the minister in charge of regulatory reform, Konotaro, has acted decisively to implement a policy to eliminate the use of hanko or personal seals. This might sound like a second order or even a trivial issue to people not familiar with the ubiquitous use of hanko in Japanese society, but ending the hanko culture will obviate the need for someone to go to an office to affix a seal on a document and the adoption of electronic signatures will curtail the need to rely on fax machines to exchange hard paper documents. Suga also wants to make permanent and make more efficient the use of various online activities, telework, medical consultations, uh, teaching, and so on, that the COVID crisis showed to be inadequate. With the uh, outbreak of the epidemic, the Japanese government temporarily uh, liberalized patient use of online medical consultations. Uh, Prime Sasuga uh, is committed to a policy of making online visits to the doctor permanent and covered by national health, national health insurance. The goal is to make the provision of medical services more efficient and to facilitate medical support for people, especially elderly people living in more rural areas where there is not adequate access to doctors. The Japan Medical Association is pushing back against this policy and trying to limit its scope. So are drugstores and pharmacists that want people to continue to bring their prescriptions in person to the, to the pharmacy rather than submit them online. Teacher organizations that do not want an expansion of online classes and other organizations with vested interests in resisting regulatory reform. Now, vested interests play an important role in supporting and financing the activities of LDP diet members. So it is to be expected that there will be efforts to water down Suga's reforms. But his reputation for decisiveness and getting his way is well deserved. He is, I think, much more, he's more like Prime Minister Koizumi than he is like, like Prime Minister Abe in his approach to policymaking. Mr. Suga served as Minister of Internal Affairs and Communication under, under Koizumi, and he saw up close how Koizumi operated. <clears throat> now, Prime Minister Koizumi had two strengths in particular that I think Suga needs to demonstrate himself if he hopes to remain Prime Minister for more than 12 months. One, is to get the public to be enthusiastic about his reforms and even more enthusiastic about his leadership. This is indispensable. In, in the, it, this is indispensable if you are going to try to do more than, than sort of eat around the edges. If you're going to try to do major reform, you need this kind of public support. And the other, and it's actually related, was Koizumi's willingness and readiness to risk his continuation in office to get his party to support his policy. Koizumi's strength lay in large part on his not being afraid to lose power. His attitude was that, look, if the party doesn't want to do what I think we have to do, then it could replace me. If I don't throw them out of the party first, which is what he did to diet members who opposed his postal system reform. Prime Minister Suga has only a year in office.
before he faces another election as LDP president. He doesn't have the time to pursue, to pursue a traditional consensus building approach to getting his party behind him. Making meaningful reform happen requires enthusiastic public support to put the wind at his back to propel his agenda forward and checkmate what Prime Minister Koizumi referred to as the resistance forces in the LDP. Um, right now, Prime Minister Suga has the support of his party and all the leading people in it. But LDP politics has not disappeared. The, the, the point I'm making here about the need to get the public behind him in a, in a very enthusiastic way to overcome what is inevitably going to be pushback on some of the policies he is trying to, push, to move forward uh, is a very important feature of the current system, current situation. But I think that Suga's efforts to build that public support have taken a blow, a serious blow, from the unfortunate way in which he has dealt with something that he would have been much better off not having raised in the first place. And that is this, his handling of the nomination of people to be appointed as new members of the Japan Science Council, Gakujutsu Kaigi, an organization of the country's leading scientists, including social scientists. New members are nominated by the incumbent members whose term is coming to an end and are appointed by the prime minister. And there's about $10 million in government funding that goes to support the activities of the Gakujits Kaigi. It has long been the assumption and it has long been the practice of the Gakujits Kaigi, the, the Science Council, that the prime minister would appoint all of those nominated by the, organ by the organization. This time, however, Prime Minister Suga decided to deny the appointment to six of the 115 recommended candidates. The decision, was, the decision was greeted by an outcry among many in the academic community and was met with public disapproval. Neither Prime Minister Suga nor his Chief Cabinet Secretary, uh, Mr. Kato, Katsunobu Kato, has responded to demands that the government explain in detail its reasons for denying appointment to the six academics. And for good reason, the only plausible reason for excluding them was that they were critical of Prime Minister Abe's national security policy and his government's anti-conspiracy legislation. The idea that, Prime Minister, that the Prime Minister can reject the nominee because of his or her political opinion is nothing like freedom, uh, uh, but Suka has dug in his heels and the LDP has tried to change the conversation to make it about the need to reform the organization. The ploy may work, though even if it does, it's costing Suga a loss in his popularity and his reputation. The second Nikkei poll taken since Suga assumed office uh, and published uh, the, uh, the day before yesterday in Nikkei, uh, shows an 11 point decline in his cabinet's popularity, down from that initial high of 74% to 63%, with 70% of respondents saying that his explanation of the rejection of the six council members is inadequate. An extraordinary diet session opened today with Suga's maiden policy speech. I'll may, I may say a few words about it in, in a couple of minutes if, I, if, I, if, there's, if there's time. Uh, this speech now will be followed by two days of questioning by the opposition parties that is bound to focus on the Science Council issue rather than on the issues that Suga is really interested in pushing, uh, which are direct, uh, digitalization, regulatory reform, and the like. Um, how Suga responds to the attacks he's going to be subjected to in the diet, whether he offers a persuasive explanation for his actions or becomes irritated and loses his temper, uh, will be watched closely and will be important. Now, it's not unusual 
for a prime minister's popularity to decline after the initial rush of enthusiasm. In public opinion polls taken since 2000, there have only been two prime ministers who saw that popularity increase between the first post-election poll and the next one. They were Prime Minister Koizumi and Prime Minister Abe after his second election as prime minister in 2012. They happened to be the only two prime ministers since Prime Minister Nakasone in the 1980s who have served more than a year or two in office. Suga's decline in popularity has been exceeded only by Prime Minister Mori Yoshiro's 90% decline and Kan Naoto's 14% decline. Now this furor over the council nomination probably will die down with time, but it's doing serious damage to Suga's Im image. Sometimes it takes a strong leader to admit a mistake. So my own view is that Suga would do well to cut his losses, reverse his decision, say that he's taken public criticism to heart and that he plans to appoint all, the, not all those nominated to the council and combine that with the creation of a high level uh, commission uh, to consider how to reform the council. Even leaders of the council agree that there is a need uh, for, uh, 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 there's room for reform. Um, but it's unlikely that he will do what I've just suggested. There are other issues on, Su on Suga's short term, that is one year agenda. Again, I repeat, the key for Suga, the political issue for Suga is how does he get reelected as LDP president a year from now, less than a year, 11 months from now. And that requires both support of the party, but he can't get some, and the support of the public, the enthusiastic support of the support of the public if he wants to get his agenda uh, uh, realized. He's determined among the, the, issue, the issues on his short-term agenda, uh, which can help him raise his popularity. He's determined to have the three major mobile phone companies reduce the fees they charge their customers, especially for large data packages, up to 50 gig gigabytes, which are necessary to watch movies, manga, play video games, and the like. Currently, such plans on average costs about $75 per month. SoftBank, one of the three major uh, mobile companies, uh, has indicated it will cut rates to below $50. Tokum Tokumo and AU are bound to follow suit. This is undoubtedly a popular policy. It's one that Suga has pushed for uh, over the years he was uh, chief cabinet secretary. And, and it will redound to his, uh, to his benefit uh, when it happens. He wants to expand national health insurance coverage for inf infertility treatments, increase support for families with young children, increase the flow of foreign workers, and undertake other policies to, re to try to slow down Japan's population decline. When he was uh, chief cabinet secretary, he pushed hard to increase inbound tourism. Uh, he's planning to resume and expand that program as soon as COVID permits and to increase the numbers and liberalize, liberalize the conditions of Japan's guest worker programs. The word immigration is still kind of a taboo word uh, in, in Japanese, but there is an immigration policy. The problem with it is there's an immigration policy without formally having an immigration policy. But, you know, it, guest workers and liberalizing the conditions, making it possible for longer term guest workers to bring family members with them and so on. This is a trend that will continue and probably will be accelerated by Prime Minister uh, uh, Suga. He also uh, is a strong proponent of the so-called go-to travel program that encourages Japanese to travel around the country, especially to go to onsen and um, uh, other uh, 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 and resorts in, in less populated and economically um, uh, uh, depressed areas. Uh, and, it, it's, and he's expanding it now people from Tokyo who were initially excluded from this program can, can go and it's very popular and it will be, uh, uh, it will increase and it involves government subsidies for uh, hotels, 
uh, for, for what you pay at the hotel and so on, and food and whatever when you travel uh, to encourage more domestic uh, uh, tourism. He signaled all that was, I don't, as I, I quickly read through the, his policy speech this morning, um, he, he has signaled, although he didn't mention it today, as I don't believe, his desire to deal with Japan's overbanking problem uh, and to increase the efficiency and profitability of small and medium-sized industries through mergers and greater government support to encourage internationalization. But these issues, and, and there are many others of sort of issues get, that get to really fundamental questions about Japan's economic structure, uh, are probably gonna to have to wait until his reelection as party president next September. If that happens and he has a three-year term, he has time to do things that are gonna take time and cannot be done so quickly. Suga has not said much about monetary policy, except to say that he's completely in accord with Abe's policy thinking and supports BOJ, Bank of Japan, Govern, Govern, Governor uh, Kuroda. On fiscal policy, he'll continue Abe's approach at least until the COVID crisis and the economic dislocations it has caused have been overcome. Next year's regular budget is going to be the largest ever probably coming in at more than 105 trillion yen. Its adoption will be preceded uh, by a large supplemental budget that will in particular support tourist and hotel industries badly hurt by COVID and infrastructure projects to minimize the damage caused by uh, natural disasters. In other words, Suga is committed to continuing Abe's policies on the first two arrows of Abenomics, monetary policy, fiscal policy, where he hopes and intends to make a difference is by focusing with laser-like concentration on the third arrow of structural reform, an area where Abe made some but limited progress. Uh, let me say a few words about foreign policy before I I stop and give you a chance to ask me some questions. Uh, Suga was at the table with Prime Minister Abe when every major foreign policy issue was discussed and decisions made when he was chief cabinet secretary. But he has no experience negotiating with foreign governments or taking a lead position on foreign policy decision making. There's no reason to believe that he disagrees in any significant way with Prime Minister Abe's uh, foreign policy something he made clear again in his speech this morning uh, to the Diet. Making his first overseas trip to Vietnam and Indonesia was exactly what Prime Minister Abe did when he made his first foreign trip after becoming Prime Minister in 2012. The only difference is that Abe visited Thailand as well as Vietnam and Indonesia, something uh, Mr. Suga did not do because of the Thai uh, political uh, situation. In addition to affirming Japan's support for ASEAN and for strengthening security as well as uh, security ties as well as economic relations with ASEAN countries, Suga supports close relations among the so-called Quad countries, India, Australia, the US and Japan. But he has rejected the idea of an Asian version of NATO something that Secretary of State Pompeo pushed without success in his recent visit to Tokyo. Uh, Mr. Suga has not shown any particular interest in foreign economic policy. His speech at the UN General Assembly, for example, notably didn't even mention trade relations or the importance of sustaining the liberal international order. And it gave only glancing reference to Japan's support for a free and open Indo-Pacific. Issues that if Prime Minister Abe was still Prime Minister, you know, would have been at the center of his, of his remarks. He's unlikely, that is, Prime Minister Suga is unlikely to continue the unsuccessful Abe made to negotiate a return of the Northern Islands held by Russia, unless the Russians signal a readiness to be more forthcoming on the issue. He mentioned it in passing in the speech this morning. I, I personally think he'd respond positively to a South Korean if South Korea signaled a desire to improve relations. 
But on this issue of the deterioration in South Korea and Japan's relationship, the ball is very much in South Korea's court. And unfortunately, it's unlikely that South Korean government will take significant steps to repair relations with Japan as long as Moon Jae-in is president. Suga has been centrally involved in decisions about the Abe government's North Korea policy. He no doubt would like to resolve the Abdekti issue as, as Abe very much wanted to do and return to 2002 North Korea, Japan, Pyongyang declaration to find that, that Koizumi signed with, uh, with Kim Jong-il to find, to find a path to normalized relations. But this depends on the willingness of North Korea to satisfy Japanese demands about the abductees. And that's something that currently seems very unlikely. And most importantly on foreign policy, like Prime Minister Abe, like every prime minister since the end of the Second World War, perhaps with the exception of Hatoyama Yukio, and even that is arguable, arguable Suga supports strengthening the US-Japan alliance as the cornerstone of Japan's security strategy. At the same time, so, so on that point, I don't ex expect to see any um, new problems arise in US-Japan relations. What I expect to see is continued um, Japanese efforts to contribute more to and to strengthen uh, the alliance uh, and whether it's Trump or Biden that's sitting in the White House uh, next year, the American government too will continue to view Japan as one of its most critical allies in the world, not only in, in East Asia. But at the same time, um, uh, and again, like Prime Minister Abe, Mr. Suga wants, needs to maintain a balance between maintaining a strong US alliance and continuing close economic ties with China. This may become more difficult. This will become more difficult if the US continues to pursue a decoupling strategy towards China. But a, Vi a Biden victory next week may bring about policy change in Washington that will make it easier for Japan to pursue such a balanced policy and that hopefully might help steer the United States in the same direction. Abe's passion was to bring about constitutional revision and make Japan a major player on the international stage. Suga supports constitutional revision in principle. He mentioned it at the end of his speech this morning, but it's not an issue that he is likely to invest much energy or political capital in trying to achieve. He's likely to, to rely on the expertise of foreign and defense ministry bureaucrats, experts, experts on the National Security Council, LDP leaders deeply familiar with foreign policy, uh, and less on the bureaucrats in the Ministry of Trade and Industry that was so central to the uh, uh, Abe administration, and not demonstrate the kind of foreign policy leadership that Abe enjoyed providing. So kind of in conclusion, at this point in time, it's just too early to predict how the Suga administration will fare. He got off to a fast start. He's already made progress on regulatory, regulatory reform, especially with the, the elimination of, of, of Hankel uh, these, and, and on digitalization with the establishment or now the planned establishment, which will happen very soon, very quickly, of a digital technology agency. He had a successful debut on the international stage uh, with his visit uh, to Vietnam and Indonesia. So far, all the, par the party mem leaders and members, diet members are standing with him. He's given key government and party posts to nearly all party leaders who dream of becoming prime minister themselves, making it difficult for any of them to oppose him in next year's party presidential election. The words that dominate conversations about Suga 
are decisive, tough, determined, pragmatic, non-ideological, domestic-oriented, charismatic, grand vision, foreign policy statesmen. These are not terms that come to mind when thinking about his leadership skills. Given where Japan is at and the problems and the issues it faces, he may be, he may be the kind of leader, precisely the kind of leader Japan needs at the current time. Someone who is intent on making major structural changes, taking them on one by one, showing the public that he can get things done that need to get done and succeed in making things happen. But it seems to me now, a month after he became prime minister, it's just too premature to make any confident, confident predictions about the Suga uh, uh, government. As I have emphasized in this talk, he needs to be bold. He needs to take risks. He needs to put everything on the line in order to get things done if he wants to get reelected as LDP president, to be popular, to make his reforms go through and to stay in office for three or four years. One hopes, at least I hope, he's successful because his success would mean a strong economy and it would mean the accomplishment of needed economic and social reforms. And it would preclude the possibility of a return next year to the pattern of revolving door prime ministers that we saw over the years from the end of Koizumi's government to the advent of Abe's second government in 2012. There's good reason to hope for Suga's success and to wish him the very best. And with that, I'm going to conclude my, my comments and uh, open the floor for your questions. Thank you very much. Well, Professor Curtis, thank you very much for uh, uh, your insight on uh, wide-ranging uh, uh, issues, both domestic and foreign, with regard to uh, our Suga administration. I really appreciated that. Uh, let me just uh, say that uh, uh, also uh, uh, um, listening to your uh, remarks, I envy uh, uh, all the students, such as uh, uh, Dr. Tsunami, who study under you at uh, uh, Columbia. And uh, um, with that, uh, I'd like to open up the uh, floor for Q&A, but uh, I also see uh, uh, Professor Hugh Patrick out of Columbia, talking about Columbia. So uh, I welcome you uh, to the event and uh, great to see you. Okay. So uh, uh, I will open up the floor for Q&A. Uh, hi, Paul Sheard from Kennedy School, Harvard Kennedy School. Listening to you, a lot of it to me, and I haven't been following any of this anywhere near as closely as you, but a lot of it to me sounds like kind of, you know, business as usual, uh, LDP politics. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of this before. Uh, the discussion about, uh, you know, an all an all Kasumigaseki kind of cross Kasumigaseki um, way of government that harks back, obviously, to the Hashimoto administrative reforms, Koizumi uh, reforms that around the beginning of the 2000s. Um, the idea that a, a a politician who's not really doesn't have a strong factional base and nonetheless becomes prime minister because there's a balancing off of, of all of the major factions and nobody can quite get their, their man across the line. Um, the idea that when a new prime minister comes in, they always have a kind of banner issue that they put up. Every prime minister does this in some shape or form. Um, my question is, is there something about Suga, Prime Minister Suga, that is, is suggests he is not just a typical sort of career LDP politician, somebody who's very good, who's very deft, very hardworking, who's somehow got to the top. You mentioned Koizumi and Abe. It seems to me that both of them are the rare Japanese politician who you felt and the Japanese public felt actually believed in something. They had some kind of basic core political driving principle that sort of animated them below the surface. And um, Koizumi's was obvious, Abe's was more kind of implied and, and people were suspicious about his constitutional reform agenda, which he didn't really prosecute. So my question to you is, do you see anything in Prime Minister Suga that suggests he has got some kind of hidden uh, inner 
political belief system um, who perhaps is the first one in another list of uh, revolving door prime ministers? There, there are, I think, let's see, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, three points. First of all, uh, prime ministers come in, they all have a, you know, a banner issue, they come up with a laundry list of things that they're, that they're promising to do, and, and then they, they, they do, don't do very much, and the next prime minister comes in. But there's, there's, there's differences here with Suga. One is that COVID, the COVID um, epidemic has made things possible that were not, could not have been accomplished as quickly uh, as Suga hopes to do, particularly digitalization. Everyone knows how, how underdeveloped Japan's digital uh, government and, uh, and, 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 and online um, uh, telecommuting, um, medical consultation and other issues uh, are. And I have no question, Suga is determined to push forward with, with digitalization and that has all kinds of ramifications for uh, the economy and for the way Japan operates. Does he have a belief system? Is it more than just a traditional LDP politician? He's not a traditional LDP politician. Uh, uh, doesn't have a faction, wasn't, is not even, not in a faction, much less uh, head of faction. Uh, he's um, uh, from an urban constituency, Yokohama, but his roots, are rural. He grew up in Akita Prefecture. Didn't come. Didn't. It left after high school. He still um, uh, very much identifies uh, with the needs of uh, rural communities uh, and sort of working class people. And that's where his his you know, if Abe's passion was constitutional revision and uh, making Japan a big player on the international stage, Suga's passion is to raise living standards improve the situation of people living in underpopulated areas of the country, um, modernizing the, uh, uh, the moving from an analog to a digital uh, economy. I think he's serious. What, what, what concerns me, and I, I, you, you picked up on it from what I was saying, and maybe you took it further than I wanted it to be taken. I don't think he's a traditional LDP politician, but I think there is a danger that he's going to play a traditional LDP political game. If he does, if he's cautious, if he looks to how to get everybody to stay with him in the party, instead of looking at how he can get the public to push the party to do what he wants it to do, if he doesn't do that, if he plays safe, he's going to lose. And I don't either, you know, he won't get reelected as LDP president uh, next year. And so his prime ministership ended, ends, or he's continued on because the party is confident he's not going to do very much to shake things up. You know, vested interests are important to LDP politicians. Suga has come out with three major goals. Eliminate the segmented, stovepiped bureaucratic system. Everybody talks about that. Uh, uh, and then he may make some, some progress. Uh, and you know, have a strong Kante, strong prime minister, prime ministerial led government, which he did a lot to help. You know, it started with Hashimoto, and 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 Suga did a lot to uh, help Abe move that move that forward. Uh, and not not give in to the vested interests. Easier easier said than done, but Suga has the poss the capability to do it again if he has the public support. Um, uh, behind him, uh, and to dispense with um, with um, unnecessary or bad uh, precedent, ashiki zende shugi. Well, that's all. That's all terrific, but um, but it's not. It's you know saying these things is easy. Doing them is hard, and it takes someone with a lot of. Um, commitment, a lot of power, and a willingness, as I said before, a willingness to put everything on the line, to say, if I can't get it done, I'm not prime minister because it's a fun job to have. I'm prime minister to change the country. You have to just hope that Suga believes that 
and we'll act on that on that assumption. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Uh, next question goes to uh, Jim Schaff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry, and uh, good to see everybody. Um, uh, Jerry, I just wanted to ask a little bit uh, about the defense side of things because uh, Suga's got a couple of tough, high profile issues. This missile defense uh, reconfiguration on the Aegis Ashore, and then the uh, F 2 fighter replacement project. Um, do, do you get a sense that he, he has kind of particular uh, affinity to some of these defense issues, or is, does he kind of want to just stay away from this and, and leave it to the bureaucracy, which then suggests to me these things are going to uh, fester in a way and not, not really get uh, solved because it seems like leadership is going to be necessary to, to push through good solutions on this front. Well, hi, hi Jim. Uh, so my, my impression, it's really not much more than an impression because I haven't discussed these kinds of issues ever with him. Um, uh, but my impression is that these issues, Aegis Ashore or uh, the F2, whatever, these defense issues are very far from, from the center of his thinking, the center of his concerns. And so he will rely on the um, uh, bureaucrats, uh, on, 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 bureaucrat, on, on, on bureaucrats who are well schooled on these issues. Um, his defense minister, uh, Prime Minister Abe's younger brother, Mr. Kishi, has not had, he's, he's, he's had long interest in his issues, but he's not, uh, he, he's not deeply uh, uh, familiar with them. Um, uh, the foreign minister, Mr. Motegi, hasn't been very much involved in, in these issues. I think, if anything, the regulatory reform minister, Mr. Kono, Kono Yohei, actually is still, is still talking about these issues and was very much involved with them as defense minister and as foreign minister. He may have more influence than other politicians, but no, the short answer to your question is, these issues may fester, continue to fester. At least they're not gonna be resolved by the decisiveness of the prime minister. Uh, I don't expect him to take to be the lead man on issues relating to defense, to defense policy, except when it comes to the question of you know, cost sharing, uh, for U.S. bases, this becomes a very political issue that Suga will be much more comfortable dealing with and trying to find an area where the U.S. and Japan can come to a reasonable agreement. Otherwise, I think uh, you'll have to look to others for ideas and leadership about, about defense questions. Thank you. Next question goes to Philip Lipsy. Hi, Jerry. Uh, good to see you. It was a great talk. Um, my question is about um, one of Suga's declared priorities that's gotten a lot of headlines, which is the 2050 uh, net zero uh, CO2 emissions target. I, I was pleasantly surprised by this because I thought, uh, you know, this was something that would probably not come until the younger generation and the LDP takes over. And so I'm curious what your read on this is, because I haven't seen much from Suga's history that would suggest that it's a personal priority for him. So is this kind of the one issue where he's trying to differentiate uh, from Abe? Is it a sign that some of the younger generation politicians um, like Koizumi and Kono are uh, be being able to influence the direction of policy? Uh, you know, is, is there gonna be much substance here or is it mostly kind of window dressing? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Well, I think you know, Prime Minister Abe had had uh, suggested an eighty percent reduction towards um, uh, carbon neutral by two thousand and fifty. Uh, uh, Xi Jinping is what made it ninety percent or whatever it was by two thousand and sixty. So there's kind of a game going on of making promises about things that no one will be currently talking about them will be around to take responsibility for when they don't happen. Uh, I treat it, you know, it's, it's, a, it, it's, it's fine to have this goal, but what's missing is any discussion. Okay, so what are you gonna do this year, next year, um, in the next five years to move this, uh, this, this forward? Uh, I don't know, it leaves me, it was the, it was the headline 
the newspaper headlines this morning about the speech that he gave in the diet were all about carbon neutral by 2050. That I think is very, it's unfortunate that that's the headline. How many voters are gonna get excited by the idea that um, 30 years from now, Japan's gonna have to be carbon neutral? Not very many. Uh, you, needed a, you need a headline that says, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it in the next six months uh, or I'm out of here. I'm surprised, frankly, I'm surprised and disappointed that Prime Minister Suga has not, he, he came in being very dynamic, digital agency, get rid of Hanko, regulatory reform, infertility treatments under covered under, under uh, the, the healthcare system. He got people excited at the beginning that here is a guy who's gonna come in and get things done one by one. Not talk about how you're gonna unify digitalization across local governments in five years, how you're gonna have carbon neutral uh, in 30 years. So it gets back to Paul's point. That sounds pretty traditional. He should not be a traditional LDP politician. He's not a traditional LDP politician. The man first ran for office, local assembly in Yokohama, he was 38 years old, first got to the, elected to the Diet, I think he was 46, had a, became probably the second most powerful chief cabinet secretary in modern Japanese history next to uh, Nakasone's chief cabinet secretary, uh, Gota, Gotoda Masaharu. This man impressed people as being different uh, being someone who can get things done that others could not get done. That's what we're not seeing right now. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, next question goes to Mr. Thomas Senkin. Good morning, uh, Tom Senkin over at uh, the Bush School of Government and Public Service now in Washington, DC. Um, just to make a quick comment and ask a question, the uh, comment following up on Jim's uh, questioning was, that uh, it is difficult to see um, Suga taking his uh, foot and putting it on the gas pedal where it comes to some of the Abe initiatives with regard to, oh, uh, uh, Article 9 or Aegis or, uh, you know, counter-strike capability and so forth. And as you say, it's very domestically focused. So I'm concerned that there's going to be some loss of initiative there and a, a chance or risk that Japan will once again revert to being sort of a passive observer of global events and respond to them as opposed to some country, a leading country and taking the initiative of changing things. That's a concern. But my, my question is, um, so Suga of course was the chief cabinet secretary. Now he has very intelligent and capable um, uh, longtime associate uh, Kato Katsunobu in that role and uh, Kato does have, by the way, some defense background. When he was a finance ministry official, of course, he was responsible at one point for the defense budget. So he's literate in that area. But do you see him playing more of a role um, in that space? Or is he going to be kind of uh, tightly controlled by Suga? Is Suga going to be his own chief cabinet secretary? Just sort of interested in the dynamic there. And thank you. Well, the first requirement for a chief cabinet secretary is to be totally loyal to your prime minister. Um, and uh, Kato will um, be his spoke, be Suga's spokesman and troubleshooter and, and the like. Uh, and, and he himself has prime ministerial ambitions of his, own, of his own. I don't, at the moment, I don't see any evidence that he's carving out or the Suga is carving out for him a uh, space in the policy arena where he'll, he'll be the, the lead man. Um, uh, so, so, so no, so my, my, my impression, my sense of, uh, of Kato is that he's a, he's a very accomplished former bureaucrat, he's a very accomplished bureaucrat uh, who's now in, in, in politics. And he will, um, he will not make waves or, or at least not for the, for the, for the immediate future or near term future, 
um, try to find an area where he shines as uh, um, a policy maker. No, he's going to have to help Suga shine. And um, I don't expect more or something different from him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Adam Liff of uh, Indiana University. Thank you very much. Hi, Jerry. Adam Liff from IU here. It's great to see you. Um, I'd like to ask for your thoughts on dynamics in the Suga administration, uh, especially as it concerns negotiations with Cometo on policy and cooperation in national elections. Do you think that Cometo will generally be supportive of his agenda, or do you expect any significant fault lines? And in the latter regard, given my own research, I'm, of course, thinking about um, security issues, be it Article 9 or some of the other issues Jim has, has raised, such as strike capabilities. But I'm eager to hear your insights into other aspects of Suga's agenda and likely dynamics within the coalition. Thank you. I think um, uh, someone mentioned it earlier. We may see on the security side, on the defense policy side, uh, much more um, not exactly passive approach by Suga, but 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 an approach that um, where he's not taking initiatives, where he's not making Japan a key player uh, on the international scene, and that will come as comfort to the Komeito, which was always uncomfortable uh, with Abe's emphasis on uh, on on Article Nine on expanding Japan's defense capability and tried and succeeded to some extent in, uh, in, in holding, him, uh, hold, holding, him, holding him back. Uh, but the Komeito has a problem with Mr. Suga in that Suga has very close relations with the Ishinokai, the Osaka-based uh, political party founded by Hashimoto Toru. Uh, and and I won't, you know, the, 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 the LDP can't afford to lose the Komeito because the Komeito does provide a lot of votes to the, to the L, to LDP politicians at election time. But having this close relationship with, uh, with the, uh, the Osaka party, with the, with the Shin no Kai and possibility of bringing them into the government to dilute the, the, the LDP's dependence on the Komeito I think the Komeito is very much aware of this threat to their kind of dominant subordinate, their subordinate but dominant subordinate position. So, so um, on reform issues, no, no, I don't think that there are issues that, uh, that uh, Suga says he wants to push hard, increase medical uh, health insurance coverage for uh, so infertility treatments for online uh, medical consultation and so on. No, this all plays very well with a Komeito constituency. Um, timing of the election, yeah, that's an issue. They don't want an election at the time of the Tokyo Metropolitan Elections in the, in the spring, which would either mean he's going to have to have an election early in the new year, which may be too soon because he doesn't make the show for it yet, or later, meaning towards September. Yeah, so there, uh, I guess the, my, my only concluding comment on this would be the Komeito's influence over this administration is not, is may, may decline somewhat, again, for the reasons I just suggested about there are options for Suga, uh, and there are not very uh, many options from, for Komeito. They really can't afford to leave this, co this coalition. So leave it at that. Thank you very much. Uh, if I may, uh, uh, I'd like to exercise the prerogative of a moderator and ask uh, uh, Professor Curtis a question, uh, which may not be uh, central to uh, 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 Prime Minister Suga, uh, but uh, uh, I'm interested in hearing uh, uh, your observation. One of the things that uh, uh, in terms of continuity from Abe administration to Suga administration, one of the issues that uh, uh, Prime Minister Abe didn't get a good mark, uh, particularly from uh, uh, America, uh, American woman, is the fact that uh, he did a lip service to uh, 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 promotion of women, having a, a wow, shining woman, and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, there was no, uh, not much substance to it. Um, 
so far, uh, Prime Minister Suga, as far as I understand, uh, uh, haven't really uh, uh, discussed the issue in uh, a substantial way. Uh, you heard uh, um, um, Minister, Ju Minister of Justice uh, uh, Kamikawa uh, spoke the other day at the Sasakawa Peace Foundation, and he mentioned, I mean, she mentioned the uh, uh, importance of promoting uh, diversity, including women. Where does the uh, uh, Suga administration stand on this issue uh, in your view? I'm not sure with that standing anywhere on this issue. He doesn't talk about, I mean, at least Abe talked in symbolic terms about the need to um, improve the status of women and so on. And then he actually made some, he had some success I mean, getting more uh, women into the bureaucracy, um, uh, encouraging uh, companies to give, to bring women more into the mainstream career tracks and so on. You know, this issue, it, this it, really dealing with this gender inequality issue um, will take both time and a much more concerted government effort than I think you're going to find in Prime Minister Suga. He doesn't talk about it. It's not something that's at the center of his, of his, um, that's a sense of concern, as far as we can tell, to him. So I can listen, I really don't see diversity gender issues becoming a very major issue in, in this administration. The one issue that, that where an issue that, that I've touched on that will become more important for Suga is the issue of immigration or guest workers bringing more foreign labor into Japan and liberalizing and, improve, and improving the conditions under which they have to live, including uh, the ban on their bringing their spouse to Japan and other things that um, make life pretty difficult for, for, for workers from foreign countries. I think that's an area where he, where he clearly has a deep interest. On the gender issue, um, I'm sure he's all for more gender equality, but is he going to do very much about it or try to do very much about it, which, you know, it's partly using the bully pulpit trying to, ex to explain how important it is to bring about much less uh, un in, 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 uh, trying to create policies that make that will forward the advancement of, um, of gender equality. No, I don't think that's on the agenda. At least it's not on the short term agenda that uh, he has to deal with over this coming year. And that's, that's not good news be f for women. And it's not good news for him because women are half the population and half the voting population. Uh, if he can get more women, you know, females, to, to women to believe that he has their interests at heart, it would probably help, but I don't see that happening. Thank you very much. As I said at the beginning, uh, we have a, a unusually larger number of uh, uh, Japanese uh, uh, tuning in from Japan and also uh, uh, from the United States, and many of them are women. I just wonder uh, if they have uh, any comments uh, uh, on this subject matter and also uh, a comment made by uh, Jerry, Professor Curtis. I see uh, uh, hands uh, uh, of uh, uh, Admiral Koda. Is this uh, on the on this subject matter, Admiral Koda? Yes, uh, thank you. Just uh, one short comment and the one uh, one question. Um, my yeah uh, yeah. My comment on Jerry's, you know, the remark is, you know, the I think very well organized and very similar to what were what have been told in Japan. So no surprise. That means the, the Jerry has a very good eyes on you know examining or checking the, the Japanese community. But at the same time, you know, the as everybody knows, the Kasim Gaseki is a big giant and kind of the zombie who never dies. So speaking in the past, many prime ministers tried to do something on the reform, but most of them were not so successful. So this is one thing, one thing that Japanese should understand. Dr. Curtis, the, the comment is very highly graded. Thank you very much. And my question to J Jerry is the, the Japanese China policy. The, Prime Minister, former, former Prime Minister Abe used to be very hard on China 
until the October to, uh, 2018, when he made his the business visit to China with the Japanese business, business people. Since then, I think the, the Abe's the, the, the position or Abe's policy toward China has started changing from pretty hard line to softer and they give and gave China more flexibility to maneuver in Asia and even in the world under the very fierce Sino-US economic war. And, the, and this is the point I do not buy, but Prime Minister Suga, you know, the, as the Jerry mentioned, the, he basically took almost every policy from the former Prime Minister Abe. And of course, it's too short to really make a examination or comments on Suga's policy. And Suga knows the, the sensitivity of the Japan-Sino relationship. So Suga is very careful about not to make his position clear on the China, Japanese, Japan's China policy. But if the regardless of the US president, coming president, either the Trump or the, the Biden, the, what the most suitable, best suitable Japanese China policy the, that would support the US trade war or economic war against China. Now, this is this if the Japanese policy toward China deviates from largely from the US policy, the alliance would could be jeopardized. This is the, the, the last thing for Japan to do. So in this regard, you know, the, the Dr. Curtis, I'd like to have your opinion or points. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I was a very old lazy sailor. Thank you. <laughs> Admiral, thank you. Thank you for joining today. Um, I'm honored to have you here. Look, you know, this question, we could use the next hour to try to, to uh, dissect and analyze the Sino-Japanese relationship and what the options are for Japan. Uh, I think Abe, yeah, Abe surely did move from a very hard line policy towards China in the early years of administration to a so more softer line, at least in the sense of uh, emphasizing the importance of economic relations, cultural relations and the like. But I think consistently through the Abe administration was, a, was the, the, an attitude of firm resolve on security issues, especially uh, Senkaku Islands, um, uh, on, on, on strengthening the US-Japan security relationship to deal with the, uh, the, the threats posed by China, uh, on positioning, repositioning Japanese defense forces to emphasize the the ability to operate in in the south, uh, so I think you know it's a it's a very difficult balancing act, a tight tightrope uh, act that the Japanese government is trying to carry out. Abe was pretty successful. He was able to improve relations with China, to move forward with TPP, to emphasize multilateralism and uh, free trade agreements in East Asia and with Europe and elsewhere, and at the same time, maintain a very positive, close relationship with President Trump. Can Suga do the same and, and, um, uh, and how will a new Biden administration, if Biden is to become uh, president, uh, how will it develop its China policy? I'm actually, a kind of point uh, 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 suggested, hinted at this in my in my talk. I think there's a chance that if we have a change in the U.S. away from Trump, and that is, you know, Biden becomes president, 
and this um, uh, intense anti-China, China, China uh, is a threat, uh, the, the uh, approach uh, taken by uh, Trump and by uh, Secretary of State Pompeo and others in this administration towards an approach that says China is a major competitor. It's a dangerous competitor. It does things that cannot be accepted. It violates international norms. We have to work with allies to, uh, to try to, cha to, to change Chinese behavior. I think that is an approach that will sit much more comfortably uh, with the, uh, the approach that Suga has inherited from Abe and is likely to, to, uh, to pursue. I mean, at, at heart, the Japanese face an extraordinary dilemma. They are dependent on the US alliance for their security. They are dependent on China for their economic well-being to a considerable degree. How do you square the circle? Well, with great difficulty is the answer, but it's not going to be resolved in a way that serves Japanese interests, in my view, by jumping on board an American China containment policy. It's not going to be, surely not going to be resolved in a manner that serves Japanese interests by having a fallout with the United States over China policy. So the Japanese are doing what they can uh, to try to keep both these balls in the air and maintain some kind of a balance. This is not an area where I think Prime Minister Suga himself uh, is going to be um, able to manage in the way that, you know, Abe was very well informed on all these international issues. I don't think that's the case with Mr. With Mr. Suga. He has great instincts, political instincts. Uh, and he, you know, I've, I've met with him many times. My impression, one impression I have of Suga, which I didn't mention today, but I'll mention it here. One person, he's a very good listener. He, you know, he has these morning meetings every morning, 7.30 in the morning, he's, he's in the private room at the, uh, at, at the hotel right near, right near the, diet, the diet building, meeting with people from all walks of life and listening uh, and then drawing his own conclusions. This is, a, this is a, you know, a very important skill for a political leader. And I think he'll be listening hard to people who, who with advice and ideas about how to manage the US, China, Japan trilateral relationship. Uh, more than that, at the moment, I really don't have anything to add. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like uh, Mireya, Mireya Solis uh, uh, to, make, to ask a question or make a comment. Um, thank you very much, uh, Jerry. That was a terrific uh, talk and I learned so much. I have a couple of questions. One is um, a very specific one about whether you think that Former Prime Minister Abe can play uh, some kind of leading role in the Suga administration as an envoy, given that he does have the um, connections with personal leaders and given his passion for foreign affairs, could that be a good combination? Is that in the cards or not? And the second, Jerry, you know, taking advantage of your deep expertise on um, Japan, I was wondering if you could offer a reflection from a macro level point of view on where Japan's democracy is heading. Um, I recently wrote an article for foreign affairs where I, you know, talk about uh, the strengths that sometimes are not highlighted enough that Japan has. And one is, of course, that illiberalism is not thriving in Japan, that Japan is a consolidated uh, liberal democracy. But nevertheless, I think it's been very interesting in our conversation this morning that we have talked about factions, we have talked about uh, public opinion, we have talked about uh, the Kante and so forth, but the role of the opposition has not really figured prominently. We talked about Komeito in the ruling coalition. So uh, what do we make of where Japan's democracy is heading? Uh, the opposition in disarray, uh, um, uh, voter turnout very low. Are those issues that uh, uh, are very worrisome? And what is your assessment then uh, of where Japan is heading? Thank you, Maria. Um, so on the first point, I hope there's no reason to, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know that uh, this is going to happen, but my hope is that, is that Suga will rely heavily on Prime Minister Abe, both for advice about foreign affairs, and even more importantly, as uh, an envoy, as a communicator 
with foreign leaders. Uh, I can see if an event were to occur where Suga might ask Abe to represent him at so, in, in some uh, meeting with foreign, with, with, with foreign leaders. Uh, one thing we know about, about, about Prime Minister Abe is that he is he's really very highly respected by leaders around the world and knows them all. I mean, he was around for a long time, longer than any of the, of the other leaders, except uh, for, for, for Chancellor uh, Mer Merkel in Germany. So I don't know that Suga will uh, uh, ask Abe to, to help, but uh, I think there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a possibility, a strong possibility, I would think, that he does so. And it would be sort of like a, a no-brainer for him to turn to uh, his predecessor uh, for advice on the things that his predecessor knows an awful lot about and that he doesn't know a lot about. So yes, that's the answer to your first question. <clears throat> the state of liberal democracy, the state of democracy in Japan, there are issues that are concerning, but nowhere near as concerning as the state of democracy in the United States. So I don't worry as much about the Japanese democratic um, uh, 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 project as at the moment I do about the American one, but having made that snide comment about my own country as uh, political situation, um, I mean, the, the, the perennial issue, the perennial problem for Japanese democracy is the weakness of the opposition. And trying to understand why that is the case is not so easy. People thought a lot of it had to do with the electoral system. So they changed the electoral system. But you still have the same, the same problem. Uh, uh, that's not going to change anytime in the foreseeable future. The opposition is an opposition is that will you know, be a thorn in the side of, of, the, of the LDP <clears throat> that will make <clears throat> Things very unpleasant for Abe in the coming in the diet in, in this diet session that open 45 day diet session open today. They'll make it very unpleasant for uh, Suga by constantly raising this issue of the of the uh, Science Council a purge of uh, names from the nominate, nomination list. But that's what the opposition does. It opposes. It doesn't do things that are going to help it gain gain power. But the state of democracy in Japan, you know, it's a different kind of, of, of democracy. The fact that there was a public outcry over this Gakujitsu Kaigi uh, Science Council issue itself shows the, the diversity of views in Japan and the, the continuing incredibly, it, in my mind, the incredibly strong uh, impact of the Second World War on way so many people think about Japan's security policy, about freedom of the press, about academic freedom, and so on. So this, um, so I'm, I'm, I, I don't think Japan is in danger of uh, more becoming more autocratic. Uh, and Suga, what we've been talking about today, is the need for Suga to be more dominant, more, more. Uh, um, <clears throat> More committed, more, more, more dominant, more committed to getting things done, being being stronger. It's not a concern that the prime minister is is too strong and exceeding the powers of his office to do things that, that shouldn't be doing. That's not the problem. So, yeah, democracy uh, uh, is different in Japan than it is in the in in the United States and other countries. But basically, I think there is a strong grounding for Japanese uh, uh, democracy. Concerns about uh, pressure on media, uh, not to be critical in the government and so on. It happens, but I don't think it's a, it, I don't think it's a major concern. Maybe I'm being too soft myself uh, on, uh, on Japan in this respect, but uh, no, I think with all the problems that Japan has, including the, of, the, of governance, democratic governance, fundamentally, it's a consolidated liberal democracy and will continue to be one. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Curtis, uh, you've been uh, very generous with your time. And uh, uh, if I may, uh, I'd like to ask you uh, one last question uh, uh, before we uh, uh, conclude the uh, uh, session today. 
Uh, this is uh, uh, about the general sort of uh, uh, culture of uh, LDP. Professor Takashi Mikuriya of uh, uh, Tokyo University said that uh, uh, Abe administration had no intention or no interest uh, in bringing up the next generation political leaders. Uh, LDP uh, used to have this uh, uh, um, tradition or culture of uh, bringing up uh, next generation politician regardless of uh, uh, faction uh, uh, affiliation. Uh, Prime Minister Nakasone and others uh, uh, all did that. Now, Prime Minister Tanaka also uh, did that. Do you see uh, uh, any interest in uh, uh, Suga, uh, Prime Minister Suga, Suga administration in bringing up the next generation of uh, uh, political leaders? It may be too early because, uh, as you said, uh, he's looking for uh, uh, you know making his uh, uh, prime ministership longer. But I just wonder how, what's your observation about uh, this tradition of uh, bringing up uh, next generation of uh, uh, or grooming next generation of uh, political leaders uh, within LDP? Well, I, I think Suga uh, um, is interest is is concerned about bringing people into the cabinet, into key party positions that are younger and who are going to be the next generation of political political leaders. But I think this issue of the next generation, it's really a question not of whether the current generation of leaders is going to bring them up, but whether the next generation of leaders are going to bring themselves up. Are they going to do, are they going to, to, to make it a real effort, not to simply follow as in the old days, your faction bosses that, you know, demands and then if you're a good, if you're a good fact, a good follower in a faction, eventually you become its leader. That is over and done with. Uh, that system no longer exists. The factional system is not what it once it once was. So the question is, who among younger leaders really has the fire in the belly, as we put it here, uh, to become leader of Japan? Uh, very few. One reason why Suga may succeed in getting reelected next year even if he doesn't do all the things I've suggested he needs to do to get public support and so on, is that there's so little competition. Look what happened this year. Why did he become prime minister? Well, because the LDP didn't want Mr. Ishiba to become prime minister and they all had, and basically they lost confidence in Mr. Kishida's ability to be an effective prime minister. So what were you left with? Prime minister with Mr. Suga. Uh, you know, when people, I think, did highly evaluate his kids capabilities, especially as that he demonstrated as the chief cabinet secretary. So it's a really interesting question that not only confronts Japan, but all our democracies, where is political leadership? Why in the United States do we have in the, in the election we're going to have next week, a 74 year old incumbent running against the 77 year old challenger? Where is the younger generation in American politics? Uh, uh, where is the younger generation in Japan? Well, you can identify, you can you can name at least some names of people who are going to be the next generation of leaders in Japan. They're Konotaro and and uh, Motegi uh, and and Koizumi Shinjiro um, and Kato Katsunobu and so on. There's several uh, more that you that you can mention. So I don't think Suga. Uh, is or should be concerned at this point in time about raising up the next generation. He, what he needs to be concerned about is how does he stay in office beyond next September so that he can get some, some important things done over the next three to four years. That's what his concern needs to be. Right now he's brought in Motegi, he's kept Motegi as foreign minister. Uh, he's given Kono a very high profile position uh, he's the anti, he's the hunko destroyer. Uh, <clears throat> he's the regulatory reform reform guy. He's given uh, uh, Mr. Hidai, his, his minister in charge of uh, digitalization, a very high profile and important role in creating a, a digital technology agency. Uh, he's put Mr. Kat Kato Katsunobu in a position where he's on TV every day uh, briefing, briefing the press, giving him a high profile and the opportunity to demonstrate his political skills. We know he has bureaucratic skills, but demonstrate his political, his political skills. 
So yeah, the next generation, there are several members of the next generation who are in this government, who have high profile positions, who have an opportunity to demonstrate that Ko Ko Koizumi Shinjiro has continued on as environment minister. So all these, these people have an opportunity to demonstrate their abilities their, and, and their ability to get public, the support of the public and the support of their party. Not an easy job to do, uh, uh, but to that extent, Suga is doing, is, is doing the right thing by bringing them in. Um, uh, but I don't expect him to, uh, to, to, to sort of look at himself as a, as a transitional figure who's going to lead to the next generation of leadership. Biden talks of himself that way, right? He's a transitional, he's going to be a transitional figure. He'll, probably, he'll stay for one term. He'll bring in the next generation um, uh, to the top positions in the U.S. government. I think Suga is not, that isn't, he doesn't have to say that. No, that's not what people are looking for him to do. They're looking for him to be a, a, a decisive uh, cha change, change maker. That's what his agenda, that has to be at the center of his, of his agenda. Thank you very much. Uh, we have unfortunately come to the point where we must uh, uh, conclude the session. I would like to ask uh, Professor Curtis whether uh, uh, you have a, a quick final word. No, well, I think I've had enough words already uh, <laughs> this morning. So why don't I just say thank you all for joining the session. It's really nice to see so many uh, people I know and, and people I don't know uh, join, this, uh, join this session. And uh, I enjoyed your, your questions. And I hope uh, it proved to be of some, of some utility. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And the Japanese politics, uh, just like any uh, uh, politics, evolve. And so I hope that uh, we'll be able to uh, bring you back uh, sometime uh, down the road. Thank you very much for joining today. I know there are many policy related events in Washington. I hope today's event meets your expectation and we'll see you again at the Sasakawa USA policy briefing series. Thank you very much and have a good day.